In this episode of the METC Podcast, I share a little bit about a fairly new Google app tool called Jamboard. I have a discussion with three other ISTE certified educators about the ISTE certification process and what that means to be ISTE certified. And then we close the show with learning how two of those ISTE certified educators are living METC's mission. Let's get right into the show. Welcome to the Midwest Education Technology Communities Podcast, otherwise known as METC. METC is a nonprofit organization based out of St. Louis, Missouri, with a mission to motivate, engage, transform, and connect all learners to advocacy, partnerships, and professional learning opportunities. METC is a premier affiliate of ISTE. To learn more about METC, follow us on social media at METC Ed Plus. You may also check out our website at METCEdPlus.org. METC is a program of Education Plus. To learn more about Education Plus, go to edplus.org. It is now time to begin our current episode. We thank you for listening and enjoy the learning. Welcome, everyone, to episode 59 of the METC Podcast. This is Jonathan Lee, your host. You can catch me on Twitter at Percent. If you listen to episode 58 with Josh Stumpenhorst, and all the way to the end where I said it'll be two weeks before our next episode comes out, and you're wondering, wow, that was a fast two weeks. Well, not. it might have been fast, but I did forget that we moved the release of last week's episode up because of the release of Josh Stompenhorst's new book. So we wanted it to coincide with that. So that release date was off by a week. So I apologize for that confusion. We are now getting into our two-week cycle with this one being released today on March 15th, 2019. In this episode, as you heard in the opener, we will be talking about a new, fairly new app called Jamboard here. I'll be sharing that with that Tekken 60. Remember, all Tekken 60s are available in video form on METC's YouTube channel. You can search Midwest EdTech Community, and there you will find all the podcasts and all of the Tekken 60s that have come out over the last couple years. Uh, We will then get into a discussion with three of my fellow ISTE certified educators slash trainers. We will talk about the process and what it means to be ISTE certified, and then what to expect if you are thinking to begin your ISTE certification journey as well. The challenges for this episode are all about ISTE certification. Are you in the process of being ISTE certified? Use the hashtag METC podcast and share your thoughts of the process and how things are going with your overall experience. Are you thinking about being ISTE certified? Also, share your thoughts or questions about that process or that thinking. Again, use the hashtag METC podcast. Future tweets can be shared on future episodes and or I can reach out to you and send you some METC podcast stickers. Also, don't forget about the Flipgrid community. Go into Flipgrid, type in METC Podcast, and leave your thoughts there as well using the different categories, the different topics we have within our Flipgrid community. Leave any feedback on the ISTE cert process. Leave any questions you may have on, the, on how that works. Any thoughts, ideas will be greatly appreciated. And again, those audio files could very easily end up on a future episode. So, let's go ahead and get into our new Tekken 60, learn a little bit about Jamboard. Alright, this is Tekken 60 episode 71. This may be one that you need to go to a YouTube channel and check out the video version because Jamboard is what we're going to talk about and it is super cool. Again, the YouTube channel is Midwest EdTech Community. That's our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to us there. Catch these 
Tekken 60s when they drop every Friday. So Jamboard lives in your drive, believe it or not. If you don't see it, talk to your network administrator, or your Google admin. I just helped an administrator turn it on today for them. So if you don't see it, it may, it may not be turned on. If you go to your drive and click on new, under the more section, there is Google Jamboard. So it lives in Drive. How cool is that? That means it has a lot of the same features as Google Drive. Now, I know some of you may say, well, isn't Jamboard, isn't that that really expensive interactive whiteboard that Google came up with? Yes, it is. It's about $5,000. I don't have that kind of money, and I don't think your school does either. But if you did, you probably want to check it out because I heard it's really cool. But it's the software that makes it that much cooler, and Google has made the software available to anybody. This can work on any device. It's a web page, jamboard.google.com. It's in your drive. You can share it. It's completely shareable. You can have multiple jams in one document. If I share it with myself, like I have in the one I'm looking at right in front of me, the one that's in the video, I share it with myself. I can add pictures. I can add sticky notes. I can add drawings all from within the phone or the web browser, wherever it happened to be. What an awesome way to collaborate. I know we were all really upset and sad when Padlet went to a subscription model. I was, I, I feel you. I was right there with you. Jamboard could be very well a replacement for it because you're adding sticky notes to a wall that allows collaboration. It's built within Google. Gotta love it. So check it out, jamboard.google.com, or go to your drive, click on the new tab. You'll find it under more and start jamming today. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the MUTC Podcast. I am excited about this episode this week, of course, just like I am every week. This is an episode all about ISTE certification, and I am joined with three other ISTE certified educators, me being the fourth one, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves each here in a moment, but my name is Jonathan Lee. I am the host. I'm an instructional specialist at MUTC. You can reach me at Percent. And how about Brian? How about you introduce yourself, please? Sure. I'm, I'm Brian Reed. I'm with the Rockwood School District. I'm an instructional technology specialist, mainly at the secondary support level. And you can find me on Twitter at I'm Brian Reed. Awesome. Stephanie, chime in. Who are you? Sure. I am Stephanie Madliger, and I am the Director of Educational Innovation and METC at Education Plus which is an uh, METC's ISTE affiliate. And you can find me on Twitter at CyberTeacher. You've probably never heard of her, but um, yep, she's out there. And our fourth one is Michael McCann. Hey, everybody. My name is Mike McCann. I am an instructional technology coach in the Wentzville School District. I support uh, schools K through 12. And I am excited to be here tonight with you, Jonathan. I know you are, buddy. I appreciate it. If, and if you're listening and you recognize Mike's voice and name, because he was just recently released on the 57th podcast on Google Keep. So you get to see a, hear a familiar voice in this one. So i um, excited to talk about ISTE Cert. Excited to talk to all of you all. We do have another trainer slash ISTE certified educator that could not make it. She had other plans this evening. Uh, and so um, she will be will be missed but um she sent us her answers so uh, i will probably exp you know just use her answers for my answers as we go mm -hmm. through the particular episode so but uh, all right let's get right on into it shall we let's talk about certifications in general first so why are they important why do we seek out certifications uh how about stephanie you want to start this one Sure. I think um, overall certifications help us continue to grow. We as educators are natural born leaders in continuing to learn and better ourselves. And so we are um, basically ingrained to push ourselves to make that impact beyond our own classrooms. Um, so we also like to be recognized as experts in our field in various um, applications and various skills. So it's one way for us to continue our education um, through a certification program. Brian, you want to add on to that? Sure. I think uh, certifications also are a good testament to uh, professionals' competence, you know, in, in the job they're doing. You know, uh, 
multi testing of, of the, the, the skills and the knowledge that one brings to the job. And I think it's also kind of cool how a lot of certifications sort of analyze how you will approach doing a certain task in your role. And so, um, yeah, it's just definitely a good testament to, to what you bring to a position or a job. Mike, anything that we may have left out you want to add on? No, I, I think they summed it up pretty good. I mean, I, I just think of these certifications as just a great way to for it's kind of that reward of like, hey, I'm continuing my education, I'm learning, I'm trying to do those things. And it is nice to have that kind of at the end, like, hey, signifying you are certified. You know, we've, we've had certifications in so many other fields um, throughout the years. It's kind of nice to see education uh, kind of starting to go down that road too. Yeah, I think that uh, it, it's just an easy way, not necessarily an easy way, especially when we talk about the AC cert, but it's just a way for us as educators in, in this field to have some kind of documentation or demonstration that we are proficient in something. In this case, uh, integrating technology in a meaningful way. You know, if you look at other other jobs or um, fields, they have different types of certifications, and I think this one is a very valuable one in the education field. So, all right. So on to the next question. I hear the the, the phrase "I am ISTE certified." What does that statement mean to you? I think uh, I think that statement. I wouldn't have said this prior to becoming ISTE certified because when we think of ISTE, we think of technology. Um, and a lot of what technology has been in education, I think, has been focused on the tool. You know, what's the newest cool tool of the times? And the thing now I think about with when you say I am ISTE certified, what's that mean? It, it just means that we have really dug into these standards and looked at how they can be incorporated into good teaching practices. It really doesn't have anything to do with one particular tool. And that's, that's what I like about it is it's really just focused on good teaching. And just to add on to that, I think um, going back to the question one, but also adding to this is when we think about our process or the, or the fact that we have achieved ISTE certification, just like anyone else, like Mike just said, when they're unpacking the standards and they're unpacking some content focus, the content focus is truly about teaching and learning and the tools are that extra bonus of how do we continue to engage and how do we continue to apply what we know and let the students or the learners also apply and show that what they know. Um, it's a very different process and being ISTE certified is kind of at the heart of, of what, we, what we are as, as great educators. So um, it's that added bonus with the technology of being a 21st century educator and um and just good practices like mike's saying the pedagogy comes right along i and i would agree with that too i mean i would echo everything that mike and stephanie have said for sure and i think for me also it brings sort of a, a confidence and a validation knowing that that i have this knowledge base now after going through this process that even creates sort of a, a more highly qualified instruction or or high quality instruction i think um you know, I, I feel more empowered to work with any given content. I know my, my background is world language, and I used to shy away from some things in this position because I didn't feel confident enough and, and you know, supporting the teachers to the full extent. But now, you know, after going through this process, the certification, I, I'm more comfortable in knowing that the standards are, are definitely there to empower us to, to help everyone and be the, the, the best support we can. And, and I just I just love how how... I sort of naturally now intertwine them in conversation with, with everybody I run into and how they're sort of driving what I'm doing in this role. So it, it's, it's kind of a very, again, validating and, and rewarding feeling for sure. Yeah, it, it definitely was something that I was on my mind when we went to DC to be uh, trained is what, what's it going to mean to be ISTE certified and what, what's this training going to look like and what are they going to train us on that kind of thing. And I, w I was surprised and in, a, in a very great way, positive way, um, like Mike had said, that it's not about tools, a specific thing. It's just about good teaching, and, and it's about integrating technology in a meaningful way, not just doing it because that's what you're supposed to be doing. And I thought that that was just a, a, a great way for ISTE to, to help um, teachers understand that that's very important when it comes to ed tech um, in that respect. So, all right, so we talked about first um, 
what it means to, to or why we get certified. I mean, now we talk about what it means to be ISTE certified. So we all help with training or run trainings for the ISTE certification. Um, if someone is, is looking to sign up to become ISTE certified, what kind of experience can they expect? I, I think being the, the newly certified uh, I'm standing here between the four of us. I, I think what I did a lot of was reflecting on my reflections, right? There's just this constant reflecting over and over and reflecting about those re reflections, which I think was phenomenal. I mean, I'm, I was the kind of teacher that would always reflect anyway, but this truly made me dive in and, and um, made me really sort of understand why I believe what I believe when I, when I go to, to perform my job, what kind of values and outlook I have in my work. And so that reflection component was huge. And I'll throw in a comment there, Brian, being the um, one of the trainers that got to, to score some of your work, I, I thoroughly enjoyed a lot of your responses. I mean, you could definitely tell that a lot of thoughts and a lot of reflection went into your responses. And I was like, man, these are exemplary responses. He's putting a lot of effort and getting a lot out of this work because of all this extra uh, thought he's putting into it. So kudos well, on that, man. No, I appreciate that. And uh, I hope the bribes helped. When I was told that you were grading, I, I sent over the gift basket. Hopefully you got that. So, yeah, yeah, month, yeah. Uh, yeah. My and, wife ate all no. that, but thanks, though. That's <laughs> <laughs> cool. I was going to add to that. I, I'll, you know, I won't continue to give uh, Brian kudos, but to, to that point, there are many learners that have gone through our cohorts that we as instructors, just like you would in the classroom, you know, we boast about them and we talk about them in meetings. So yeah, Brian, you were one, but there are several that it's exciting um, to be on the other side of this to help people um, when we see those light bulbs light and it's different because um, you're, you're spending the first two days together with us face to face. And then you're basically on your own in, in the wild, wild, west of the internet um for eight weeks um and you're not alone per se because you're in this you know online course but you don't necessarily see each other it's a different way of learning and when we can see and hear in the tone of the reflections um and then when you know jonathan and i and mike and you know we're grading and we're and we're reading through this it's just an exciting thing to see the changes um, so both as, as a learner myself, when I went through, I could tell when I got excited about something, when I was answering um, discussion forms, mm -hmm. I was um, responding back to someone else's really cool idea. Um, those are things that you just don't get in a typical uh, certification. So the process is, is kind of rigorous because you are reflecting and constantly thinking, uh, which is not necessarily what other certifications that I and several of you have achieved uh, it's just a higher quality um, professional development that um, that is a blended learning experience and and which is very different than your typical certifications. Yeah, there's not a ton I can add to all of that. I was just really the the very last part of what Stephanie you just said the blended learning. I, I feel like this certification blended learning is like a it's a it's a buzzword right now, you know, and I feel like this truly does kind of model what that blended learning can look like um this whole certification process so i think that's kind of the biggest thing i think people would what can they expect like expect to be immersed in what blended learning looks like absolutely and so what they can expect like stephanie would mention is two days in person to start us off and it is a very broad overview of kind of what the eight weeks are going to be like we kind of cover all the topics at um, 50, 3,500 degree or 3,500 feet or whatever, however you want to say that. Um, and then you dive deeper into those concepts within the eight weeks. Uh, I, I would say that not only is it just all that, everything but everybody else said is, it's definitely a, te a test of your ability to manage your time. Um, there is a lot of meaningful work that goes into this. It is, it's like taking a college credit course. You will have some, mean, some work involved there's reading there's watching videos there's responding to forms there's assignments um and it's not just cakewalk assignments these are assignments that are going to ask you to go back to your district and think meaningfully how you're going to incorporate these ideas into your classroom into your school and into your district and and that is just valuable i mean you're not just creating things to create things they're living what we want um to be doing ourselves you know we we don't want to just be integrating tech just to do it we want to be able to you know to make it meaningful and these assignments aren't just to, to 
complete for no reason. We've got many of our people have gone through these have taken longer than the week or two weeks or however, because they're actually doing the work with the, with the district, with the other people. And that just makes it more worthwhile and beneficial to everybody. And that's kind of the point. Um, so I like that part of the online experience too. And, and I would agree. I know we're, we're going on with the questions, but I would say, I know you, you compared it to a college credit class or whatever, but I would argue that this is way more involved than, than one of those classes because the classes I've taken online truly haven't impacted my own philosophy of how I approach teaching as much as this one has. I mean, this was a game changer for sure in a good way. Good point. And that's what I add on. Well, I do want to add on, but how would I want to, like, that's, that's pretty good there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's going to be Brian's soundbite. We got it. That's yeah. it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I do want no. to say, for, to, to that point and to add specifically to that, I don't want to say, I will use the word cakewalk comparatively. The two days is the cakewalk. You're mm -hmm. in a group together with, you know, 20 other people. You're meeting people. It's fun, exciting. Then you have the eight weeks where you're still kind of together, and I'm going to say it's, you know, less than a cakewalk or, or greater than, however that works. Um, but the e-portfolio was the challenging thing. And so going back to um, Jonathan and saying time management, that's where it's like, hey, I don't have somebody telling me I have to turn something in by a certain date. Mm -hmm. I've got six months to get this done and pretty much by default, I think all of us plus the five or six cohorts now that we've helped through, uh, you know, leave it to the last month or two, uh, even though you have six months to get it done. Uh, it's getting yourself to sit down and, and as we've said, is reflect and really think through why am I teaching? Why am I um, using this tool? What outcomes am I expecting my learners to achieve? And, you know, those are things that you don't necessarily do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that challenging part is truly building, sitting down and building those artifacts and getting that e-portfolio done. And that, to me, is that game changer that, Brian, you're referring to. For sure. Yeah, I, I will say that, um, for me, anyway, and I'll give a shout-out to my former district, Brentwood, uh, the, the portfolio wasn't as difficult as, as the coursework that we did, just but simply because... In my former district, we had to have we had a portfolio that had eighteen to twenty two artifacts that had to be redone every year, and that was part of our evaluation process. It had to have reflections. We had to have a video recording of ourselves, and so making or matching up what I was doing in the classroom to what I was, um, you know, in that portfolio was was hard every year. And so this just it brought back memories. Most good, some some not so good, um, but I mean it, it made, definitely made that a little easier for me. Not to say that it was easy by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely um, because I had that prior experience. Um, but yeah, if you don't budget your time, that six months is going to fly fly by. And I will say one more thing: a shout out to you, Jonathan, for for the organization piece. You know, when we got a copy of that Google Sheet and and was able to track some of the artifacts and where they overlap with the standards and all that was. For me, that was a really great way to start my journey with this portfolio piece. So I just wanted to call that out too. So I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm glad I helped. I, that's going through that was just difficult for me. And I had visually, I had to remember, okay, which ones? Because you can only have nine to fourteen artifacts, but there's 25 different criteria, and mm -hmm. so you know you're going to have you have to have overlap, obviously. And uh, and so I, it just yeah, I mean, it's easy, very easy to have 22 artifacts, but you can't, you can only have 14. So that, yeah, I'm glad that's able to help others out there too. So, all right, so let's go on to uh, how does this certification process support your understanding of both the student and educator standards for OVISD? So to me, I kind of started talking about this a little bit already, but that creation of those artifacts, um, now ideally, you know, most of us are doing those in our day-to-day -day role as it is. Um, but really looking back and reflecting on those artifacts and applying your knowledge um, of the eight or sorry, seven standards, um, you know, collaborator is one. So why is it that I'm collaborating? What is it? What tools am I doing using in order to collaborate? So when you really think through it, as Jonathan, you just said, you only have a certain number of artifacts that you can uh, apply or, and connect to the criteria. And so that's, that's that hard thinking. 
And what that does is you as an educator are one standard or one group of standards. Most of us are then working in classrooms in a K-12 setting and we are looking at the student standards. So in order to connect our artifact, we have to then connect it back to an artifact that you're using with student standards, um, which again makes that, that second deep or deeper level of connection of applying your knowledge um, across the board. I think the thing for me in regards to like, how did this cert process like give me a better understanding? It, it's almost that giving you time and forcing you to take the time to look at them. Um, let's face it, teachers today, teachers, administrators, anyone in the education world, they don't typically have the time to just say, boy, I'm going to spend the next couple plan hours just looking through these standards and really getting used to them. And so this, those, those two days in person, I mean, there's how many times in that training are we handing out paper and it's the standards and we're asking people to let's dive into these standards. So I think that's just the more and more, it allows you to just dive into these standards more and more to where then for my position as an instructional coach, now I feel a lot more confident to be able, when I'm meeting with teachers, either a grade level team or one-on-one, -on -one, I can more freely just start talking about, oh, hey, you know what, this meets this standard and here's why. And and I, I probably couldn't have done that past, oh yeah, there's these things called the ISTE standards prior to that. Oh, for sure. I would definitely agree with, with what both of you guys have said. And I would say for me too, um, it, it, once I had that aha moment of how the educator standards obviously reflect the student standards, and once you deal with one, you're sort of dealing with the other by, by default, and, and not in a lazy way. It's actually a really good, a good way. There, there's that, that connected, but I found myself sort of analyzing what I do in my role and where I can improve, right? So I was started to see little gaps of where I would spend more time with, with certain things and not others, and so as I'm helping you know, support the students and teachers in, in the district, it's, it's really, it's much easier for me to see where I can focus more of my energy. And, and that in turn has actually really caused me to have more motivation to stay up to date and more current with, with the trends and pedagogies, you know, to make more connections um, through, through my PLNs and, and social media and stuff too, which is really cool because then you see what other educators are doing and how that relates back to, um, to, to the standards and then drives everything forward from that point too. Yeah, some good points. I, I mean, I, to be honest, I mean, being with the instructional specialist at METC, I knew about the standards, obviously. I've been to ISTE and I've been been there during the rollout of the new versions. Um, but I couldn't tell you what the seven were and, and how they connect at all. But I definitely can now and how um, how much they do connect as from teachers to students. And, and, you know, and honestly, at times, as you're going through the two-day in-person training, it's almost harder to differentiate between the two. Um, are we talking about student standards this time? Or are we talking about the educator standards? And and really, you can almost tell you we're talking about both because they are very similar and they have similar goals in a lot of respects. And so, um, and then just being able to tie that back to what we're actually doing with, within the uh, class and for us and with your students. And so for us as, as uh, teachers that teach teachers, uh, it was hard for us to really make that connection. Like when we say students, it's a general term. Uh, you know, we teach, my students are teachers. And so what am I doing to reach those adult teachers? And we've got um, participants that are at the college level and teaching um, adults there too. So it's, um, you know, students is a general term in that respect, not just nearly a kindergartner or anything like that, but of course it does meet that too. So um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely, uh, so the follow-up question we have is um, how does that understanding impact your practice? And we kind of touched on that, um, but does anybody want to add to what they've already said? Yeah, I'll add. Um, for me, it's been interesting. I've had with my specialist degree, which I'll tell you is very, very similar to what I just went through for certification. My specialist degree is, was online and it was um, in ed tech. And so we built a portfolio and that was <clears throat> more than 10 years ago. So... <laughs> The point of that, though, is it's very similar to the process that we go through here to get the certification. However, to that point, we used and looked at Beyond the Standards, TPAC, and SAMR. Um, and to me, those frameworks and that research um, that Puntadura Mishra 
basically have provided over years and years and years of studies really helps you with your instructional practices. And that's where that piece where it's a game changer in the pedagogy and the teaching of the standards um, because you're really using research and you're using methods that have been around for years to then, um, uh, let's say, marry your dates. I'm not sure, guys, you guys are the marrying and date kind. To the, to the standards um, so that it, that it meshes together really well to, so that those impacts can happen in your classroom. Um, and to me, that's what makes it super duper um, exciting and also uh, it gives that deeper impact for the learner as well as the teacher as you're, as you're really, it's the whole, whole child, whole teacher. I agree with that. That's a good connection there, Stephanie. Thank you for wrapping that up for us. Any last minute remarks that we want to talk about that we want to make sure we, we forgot to say anything and maybe it wasn't uh, covered in a question about the ISTE certification and the, the process it the, we, that we go through to become ISTE certified. Anything that we want to add for our listeners um, so they have an idea of what to expect or what this all means. I, I would say, you know, based on what we've been talking about, just be open to having conversations with others, whether it's virtually or in person, because that was for me a little intimidating at first, putting myself out there as an exposed, you know, learner, but it also was very valuable because I got to soak in a lot of different insights from, from colleagues all across, you know, um, where, where we were from. And, and to that extent too, um, I would encourage people to grind it out because there will be times where it gets really tough to sit there and reflect and, you know, and 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 to to sort of have that 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 self discovery time, but it was truly one of the most valuable things I've done. So be willing to grind it out. That'll be extremely helpful on the back end. Yeah, I, I think you said that well. Grind it out. Um, yeah, I, I distinctly remember uh, being that dad that was uh, at. I was physically at the park with my children, but I was feverishly uh, working away on a on a portfolio to make sure to hit that deadline. Um, so no, it's, uh, it, you said it right. Be ready. Like it, it, it's kind of unlike anything else you've ever been to, um, because it's, it's not full of check out this whiz bang, awesome tool, sign up here. I mean, it's, it's more just breaking it down and saying, why do we need to be digital citizens? And, and why is this a good teaching practice? You know? So I mean, just, I know we're getting ready to get into our game, but I mean, there, there's entire sections on understanding by design. I mean, in your, in this technology certification thing. So it, it kind of comes at you a little bit from left field of like, oh, hey, whoa, this may not have been what I was thinking it was going to be. And I think the final thing there is, is you're not alone. I think we've touched on that a little bit. Um, even through the portfolio stage, ISTE has set up an online course where you're, you know, kind of put in with all the people that are going through the e-portfolio stage. And METC has set up, you know, a Facebook group so you can go, you know, have conversations in there. And, you know, there's a hashtag ISTE cert and ISTE standards out on Twitter. Um, so there's definitely um, more and more people. Uh, that are jumping on and are, in, are interested. So, you know, um, bes besides the fact that we're not leaving you as instructors, you have a big community out there that's, that's going to help you um, through the whole process and after it. Yeah, absolutely. We just got an email uh, yesterday, I guess, from one of our uh, participants that said, hey, I'm getting ready to submit my portfolio. Can you take a look at it? Absolutely. I mean, we'd be glad to do that. So um, getting ready to dive into that after we record here tonight. So uh, hopefully that you've been listening and got a lot of information about the certification process and maybe you are intrigued and want to learn more and maybe sign up for uh, it's your certification. You can go to the show notes or go to our website, metcedplus.org. You'll see information on the learning tab, professional learning tab for ISTE cert. It's also on the scroll and the scroll. So we have a couple uh, different ISTE cert cohorts coming up. We run them about every two months, but we've got a couple different locations coming out uh, here soon as well. And um, if there's not one close to you, you can reach out to Stephanie or myself and chat with us and, you know, we can, um, you know, we, we've got one coming up in, in Florida, so we are traveling down there, and we've got some in some other areas that are 
coming down the pike. So uh, we don't travel often, but we will travel for this because we believe in it so much. And so reach out to us and let us know how we can help. If you're going through the process right now and you have questions or um, you want someone to look over your portfolio, you can reach out to us and we'd be glad to take a look at it and help you where we can. We can't uh, tell you pass or fail because we aren't responsible for grading it, but we can kind of give you an idea of, of our thoughts and, and uh, some of us that certified and been through the process Hopefully that's um, meaningful and helpful. So um, do a shout out. All right, so let's uh, close it out with a game. You guys, you guys ready? I'm ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, Brian has dubbed this ISTE certification acronym BINGO. So uh, if you've been in education for more than a day, uh, you've probably come across a few acronyms. I was at state meetings today, and there's yet another couple of acronyms the state was throwing out at us that are brand new off the off, hot off the presses. So you're used to acronyms. So we are going to start this by first mentioning three acronyms you'll come across within the training, whether it's the two day in person or the, the eight week online. Uh, we'll start with three each and then we'll narrow it down to two and we'll see how far we can go. If you give up, you say give up and we'll move on to somebody else. Brian, we'll let you go first. It's your game. Oh, fantastic. I think uh, I will start with UBD. I know Mike alluded to it earlier and I think that's a great one um, to, to include on my board. Um, I think I'm also going to do SAMR because that obviously is, is, a, is a big one that we're going to talk about a lot during the certification process as well. And then I'm going to throw in TOS, T-O-S, which oddly enough is actually Spanish for cough, but that's not what it is in this case. Um, <laughs> it's actually the terms of service. You know, when we use these web tools, it's always good to check those before we use them with our kiddos. Nice. Cool. Stephanie, you want to go next? Give it a whirl. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to definitely, well, ISTE is I S T E. So that's, that's a good one. Um, obviously M E T C is, has to do a whole lot with it. So I'm stealing the, the easy two. And then truly I'm going to, I'm going to go with, um, COPA C O P P A, which is your children's online privacy act. Um, that's a big one when it falls under that whole digital citizenship. That's, that's my fave. All right, Mike, you get to go next. Yeah. Hey, going last in this isn't any fun. I haven't <laughs> gone yet. So hush. Oh, I guess you haven't <laughs> gone. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what, I was literally going to just say, I'm only doing one. That couple one is like right now in my job. That is, seems like that is all I'm doing right now. I find a new iPad app and I go find the happen in there so I was totally going to take that but uh no I think the I think the one the one that stood out to me I know when I was there was TPAC because I was much more familiar with SAMR um prior to going so that was really good to see was was that TPAC um obviously then going into PBL because it's a big that's a big one in my district right now we're really working on that uh getting into those, um, those types of that project based learning and getting kids to go on their own, kind of just off on their own and letting them learn about what they want to learn on. And then, uh, I do, I actually just had a, I just had a FERPA training recently that I had to go through. So there we go. FERPA. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I'm just going to take the easy ones then. So I, I know Stephanie took some easy ones, so I might as well take some too. Uh, TPAC has been said, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but there's different components of TPAC, so you can either be um, PCK, which would be pedagogical and content, or you can be TPK, which would be technology and, and pedagogical, or you can be TCK, which would be uh, technology or content. So those are all three different acronyms, so I'm taking those three. Well, Brian, you, <laughs> Brian, you got does another one? Does F-R-E-E -E count? Do we get a free space on this board? Um, wait, that's not an acronym. Um, how about uh, how about if I do? Well, I know you guys talk about COPA. How about CIPA, C I P P A, which is related to FERPA and COPA, but I think that's a good one to uh, to add on there as well, for sure. Okay. Okay. So are we going with a couple more. You just uh, do one. Let's do one. We're gonna run out of time here, so. We're do, <laughs> do one. I'm gonna go with um, STEM. Good, Mike. You got another one. Good choice. All right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with one. I'm gonna go A T for assistive technology hey, you know, because I think that's a uh, that's a big one right now, and I think that's right in line with uh, with the standards. Awesome. So uh, in order for this to end, I guess I have to lose. So how about yoga? Does yoga is that an acronym for something? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> it's not, but maybe we could probably make it one. But uh, that is how we start our two-day training. So you don't necessarily need to be in your suit and tie for your two-day training. But uh, we will be starting with a little bit of yoga. Don't worry. If you know who I am and you've seen me, I can do these poses. So you don't have to like, freak out about what kind of poses we're going to be doing. But um, it is a lot of fun. So, all right. I, I hinted at that if you have questions or if you're on the fence or you're going through the process and you want to get some thoughts or ideas – from the experts, you need to reach out to us. We said at the very beginning of the show um, our contact information, and there are going to be in the show notes as well. But let's go ahead and run through real quick about who we are and how we can, and people can reach out to us. So I, I'm Brian Reed on Twitter. Uh, you can reach me at I'm Brian Reed. <laughs> and Mike McCann. Um, you can reach me on Twitter. I am at McCann1776. Mike, is that something, 1776? Something, something important happened back then. Yeah, there was some, some kind of a year, I think, there. Some July 4th, around that time. Something to do with your teaching background, too, probably. Yeah, I right. might, might have been a history teacher at one point <laughs> in the before time. All righty. Stephanie Manliger and I can be reached or found on Twitter under the Cyber Teacher um, Twitter handle. Very nice. And I'm Jonathan Lee, and you can find me also on Twitter at JLeeTech%. And again, check out those show notes, METC at plus.org. More information on that same website as well. You'll find information on the ISTE cert. Come check out a training. Come be a part of us. Come get ISTE certified. It is very valuable, as everybody has mentioned in this episode. And reach out to those who have already gone through the training, and they will tell you the same thing, no doubt. So thanks for checking in. Thanks, everybody, for being part of this episode. I greatly appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for leading it, Jonathan. That was great. All right, we're going to close out this episode with our new segment, Living METC's Mission. These are four rapid-fire questions based around METC's mission to motivate, engage, transform, and connect. And Brian Reed is going to actually be on a future episode. He will not be joining us on this particular one because he's going to get to do this all by his lonesome uh, in a couple months here. So Stephanie and Mike have stayed on, and they are going to respond to these questions. So let's get to it. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Ready. All right. So, M, what motivates you? I love helping others succeed. So I like to put teachers specifically in a position to succeed or excel because then that gets students to succeed and excel. E, how, are, how do you engage your students or staff? I get them to participate in engaging online activities like Twitter or Flipgrid or anything that I can do to help uh, that interaction. I try to model the best teaching practices I can in the PD a deliver that hopefully is something that teachers can translate back to their classrooms. T, transform. What is an area in which you have transformed personally or you are currently transforming in your schools? I have transformed from teaching little guys as an elementary teacher um, to teaching adults and creating that professional development. Very, very different to teach a third grade child a math facts um, than it is to teach an adult educator um, a professional development um, topic. I think this question uh, for me, it's directly related to something I'm working on right now and uh, rolling out iPads into our district, working with teachers on how to use those in a transformative way uh, as a creation tool rather than a let's just sit and watch a video tool. So I think that's a big area right now. And finally, C, who are you connected with that others should connect with as well? Um, I believe since this is about ISTE, we're going to stay with ISTE and the ISTE board, uh, ISTE cert, um, ISTE standards, um, but also just truly really, that's that global connection, but the local connection I would definitely follow and, and um, participate in MoEd chat and follow uh, the Mo legislation, um, but also digital citizenship. So anything hashtag digit. I'm going to do a plug for the people I 
think you should connect with that I get to hang out with on a daily basis. And that is Mr. Greg Lawrence, Miss Amanda Moody, and Miss Sam Hardesty Knoll. You can find them at Greg Lawrence, at Tech Knoll, and at Tech Moody. They are amazing people doing amazing things in the Lunchville School District. Awesome. And so you two are most likely live in METC's mission. So if you want to share out on Twitter, you're welcome to do that. Use the hashtags METC podcast and METC and hashtag I am METC, which came from our conference. So we will be using that as well. So share out using that or the Flipgrid channel will work as well. So thank you for joining us, Mike and Stephanie, and sharing how you are living METC's mission. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that brings this episode to the close. Thanks to my fellow ISTE certified educators slash trainers for joining me on this episode talking about the ISTE certified educator process. If you are in the process of becoming ETC certified, we'd love to hear from you using the hashtag METC podcast. If you're on the fence, not sure, have further questions, feel free to reach out again using the hashtag METC podcast. Or if a video is of your preference, you can go to flipgrid.com, type in the code METC podcast and leave some feedback or questions there as well. And we can play those questions on a future episode. Also, hopefully you got a little bit out of the whole Jamboard Tekken 60. Again, those Tekken 60s can be found on our YouTube channel. That is the Midwest EdTech Community YouTube channel. Each Tekken 60 will drop every Friday, so you can catch the new one if you subscribe there, if the audio format is not enough for you. And hopefully you got a little bit out of knowing why both Stephanie and Mike live and breathe the mission of METC by being motivated or motivating, engaged, transformed, and connecting with others. So thanks for them for sharing how they are METC. How are you, METC? Use the hashtag I am METC and share how you are METC. There's also a topic on the Flipgrid channel, so share how you are METC with us. And again, it may be on a future episode. Thanks again for checking out this episode of the METC podcast. If you like what you hear, please share with others. We greatly appreciate it if you are on iTunes and you feel the need. Leave us some feedback. Greatly appreciate that as well. That feedback helps others locate the show. So thanks again for checking us out. Until the next episode, have a good one, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Midwest Education Technology Communities Podcast, otherwise known as METC. To learn more about METC, check out our website at metcedplus.org or follow us on social media at metcedplus. To learn more about Education Plus, go to edplus.org.